What's going on you guys and welcome back to the a -Ray Show. And happy holidays y'all, happy almost new year, Christmas and whatever else you guys celebrate. But anyways, with this video we're going to be talking about three things that you need to do before the year 2021 ends. This is a very timely video because of course you can benefit in the short term, but some of these concepts that we're going to be going over are also going to apply in the future years, 2022, 2023, and so on, as long as all of the rules stay and all the laws stay applicable. So anyways, with that being said, if you guys want to see some life hacks, stay tuned and you guys already know, cue that intro. I know you guys aren't here for some disclaimers, so I'll make this very short. We have to do this disclaimer before we get in this video because we are going to be talking about how you can optimize your taxes in this video. So with that being said, I'm not a tax professional. I'm not licensed or anything of that nature. So take everything that I'm saying with a grain of salt and as mere entertainment, y'all. So anyways, if you guys happen to learn something great, but I would always do your own research and reach out to a tax professional and verify this information for yourself. So anyways, sorry about that, guys, and hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video the first thing that you should consider before the year ends is a concept called tax loss harvesting and if you don't know what tax loss harvesting is basically it has two major benefits one being it's a way for you to be able to optimize your taxes so that you pay less and it's also another way for you to be able to capitalize on your gains for the year so these two benefits are huge it's a thing that tons of investors and high very wealthy people do even hedge funds and so on and you know Everyone pretty much does it because it's a great way for you to be able to save money or for you to be able to make a little bit more money, however you like to look at it. So here's a cool visual that I found. And by the way, all the links will be in the description so you guys can check it out yourself. But anyways, the way it works is you can combine your gains with losses so that you can reduce or eliminate your tax bill. And we're going to be going over the scenarios on an Excel spreadsheet so you guys can kind of understand it a little bit better. But essentially... Again, just to reiterate, it's a way for you to optimize your tax bill for this current year. And there are a few things that are a little bit more complicated when it comes to tax loss harvesting. For example, you need to know what the wash sale rule is. So it says that no tax benefit if same investment purchased within 30 days. So that just means if you own a stock and you sell it to take part of this tax loss harvesting you can't rebuy it within 30 days because that would be part of that wash sale rule and then you won't be able to get that tax benefit on that specific investment so with that being said i'm going to be showing you guys some scenarios with the numbers so it's a little bit easier to visualize and so that you guys can optimize your own taxes so here's a spreadsheet i put together and this spreadsheet shows three different scenarios that you can go through with tax loss harvesting and just so you guys know it's not as easy as this is Every scenario is going to be a little bit different. For example, tax brackets are going to be different. In this scenario, we are assuming that you are paying short-term capital gains and you are in the 10% tax bracket. And this is why I would highly recommend talking to your own tax professional and doing your own research. This concept and strategy is just something that you should know and hopefully be able to learn and capitalize on and for yourself. So anyways, let's take a look at the three different scenarios. So for scenario number one, let's say that in the year 2021, you have realized gains of $10,000. So you would have to pay, and we're assuming that you are paying 10% and you are in the 10% tax bracket, you would have to pay $1,000 in taxes and your net would be $10,000. So let's say that you also own a bunch of stocks and you are down $2,000. So if you had realized these losses, instead of paying that $1,000, you are now paying $800. So it's not that big of a difference, but it is something that a lot of people like to do because you are paying less in taxes. And yes, your net will be a little bit lower, but really if you own stocks that you don't see yourself owning in the long term, then this is something that you can definitely do to optimize your taxes. And also you can buy back after 30 days. Remember that wash sale rule. So on to scenario number two. So for scenario number two, let's say that you have realized gains of $3,000 and you have $3,000 and then you would have to pay about $300 in taxes, assuming that you are in the 10% tax bracket. And let's say you take those $3,000 that you got in gains and put into another stock and you are down basically $3,000. So what you can do is you can realize those $3,000 in losses. So you are back to $0 and you don't have to pay any taxes. So instead of paying $300 on your, uh, on your capital gains, you are paying $0 and you are back to a net of $0 
and you don't have to pay that $300 in taxes. And of course, this is a buy scenario situation where if you own a stock that you don't feel comfortable with, then this isn't a bad situation. And if you own a stock that you are comfortable with and you probably think that, okay, it's going to go up in the future, it's totally up to you. I'm not saying you have to capitalize on these tax lost harvesting strategy. It's totally up to you. But anyways, on to scenario number three. So let's say that is your first year investing and you put in $3,000 and you have $0 of realized gains. So you're not going to be paying any taxes at all because you don't have any gains. And let's say your $3,000 are on all unrealized and you have $0. So you basically didn't make any money and you're down $3,000. What you can do is you can realize these losses and then basically because you don't have any gains you're not really offsetting it so for example in scenario number one you are offsetting it by paying less in taxes here you're also offsetting it but in this situation what you can do is you can offset three thousand dollars that's the maximum per year and then you can take that and put it against your income from your day job or any other way that you're actually getting some cash flow in and some taxes that you have to pay so let's just say you make fifty thousand dollars a year that are going to be taxable you now have to pay tax on three thousand less dollars and if this is above the amount so let's say your unrealized is five thousand dollars you can do three thousand dollars for this year and then push back the rest of the two thousand dollars for the next year so these are just some things that you should go over with your tax professional and do a little bit more research on and this is a pretty broad concept and strategy so i would do your own research anyways and maybe i'll make a video let me know in the future if you guys want to see a more detailed version of this video so that's it for the first thing that you should consider so the second thing that you should consider is the crypto wash sale rule loophole so this is a loophole that unfortunately is probably going to end by the year 2021 so just in a couple of days and if you're watching this video afterwards i apologize i hope i should have made this video a little bit earlier so that's definitely my fault but anyways Remember we were talking about the wash sale rule with stocks? Well, the wash sale rule doesn't apply yet for crypto. So if you are down on any crypto, go ahead and sell that. And again, not tax advice or anything like that, but you can sell it and then rebuy it and you don't have to worry about that wash sale rule and you will still be getting that tax benefit. So every single thing that we went over for the tax loss harvesting with all those scenarios all apply for crypto. And the last thing that you should definitely consider is setting up goals for the next year of 2022 and so on. And the reason why I highly mention this is because it not only helps out your psych and psychology and helping yourself by setting goals that you want to achieve, but it also lets yourself know, okay, this is what I have to do to keep on pace with my goals. It's a great way to be able to track and learn more about your investing habits and being able to reach and achieve your goals. I set some goals for 2021 and you guys just have to subscribe and see to be able to see if i hit my goals if i achieve them or if i didn't achieve them so that's definitely coming out with the next video but anyways that's pretty much it for this video if you guys want to see me if i achieved my goals or not or if you just want to stick around definitely hit the subscribe button hopefully i was able to bring you guys some value the whole purpose of this channel is to not only grow my investments but to grow others and hopefully we can do this as a community and be able to make and build wealth over the long term so that's pretty much it i hope you guys have a good holiday time and a merry new year and all of that so definitely stay tuned we're definitely going to be coming out with some banger videos and that's it peace out y'all